Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Kerbal Space Program. Here we've got our Minmus Lander 1, is that what we called it? Where's our info? Isn't there like an info thing here? Tell me about the craft? Do I have to... Aha! Yes, Minmus Lander 1. So, we're not totally sure yet whether it will actually be landing on Minmus, but that's the idea. Um, so something that I want to do is take advantage of all the extra science that we can get from our scientists here. Um, automatic EVA disabled. Activate a hatch? Excuse me? What is that all about? There's no crew hatch on the top? Or in the crew cabin, so you can't get out? That's fine, I guess. We can transfer him into the top. I just didn't know that was going to be an issue. So let's, um... Let's not do that, I guess, until we actually have adjusted our orbit. We don't want him to get lost during maneuvers. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so our normal should be here, I think. Although it could be down here. And we're burning at our... At our... Descending node. Right, so we're we're burning normal. Yes, okay. Oh, maneuver node is down here, it's telling me. Okay. I didn't have to know which direction normal was because the maneuver node was being pointed to and they're the same thing. Alright. Uh, and we are arriving in 24 seconds. And we want to burn for 20, so we'll start when we're at uh, 10. And then we'll, we'll do some transferring around so that the, the scientists can get out and fly around. And let's burn. Also, whatever. Uh, yeah, I see our stuff lining up the way it's supposed to. This is all going as according to plan, and stop. Okay, whatever. So, we've adjusted our orbit, and now, uh, if we want to, we could set a maneuver, I don't know exactly where, we'll adjust it later, to point us towards Minmus. And actually, that was... What is this an encounter with? Is that the moon or Minmus we're encountering? That's encountering the moon. Well, we don't really want to do that. We'll just shoot right on by it. Okay, so there's our closest approach. Target's going to be over there when we approach. Uh, so let's burn a little bit more retrograde. So we have sort of a, a not very far orbit around the, mo the, the Minmus. And just rotate this until we get an encounter. We have periapsis and, in and an encounter. Oh wow, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's still gonna bring us right back home. We're not gonna slingshot by it or anything. Minmus is pretty light, so I guess it's not ha making that much difference. We're actually shooting quite far out. I would kind of like, if possible, to burn less fuel. Yeah, which we can do. And still have a pretty good encounter. This sets our periopsis at 2 million meters. Is that close or far? Like, two million is a lot. Minus periopsis. Oh, we're gonna escape right as we fly by, huh? So can I burn a bit? No, if I burn any less, we never catch it at all. Alright, this seems fine, I guess, and we'll just um, adjust... Oh no, a moon encounter. Uh, well, whatever, we'll do something like, like this. We'll encounter it pretty close, and uh, we'll base our decision about whether to land on um, how much fuel we have at the time. So, uh, now that we've got this maneuver all lined up, and it's not coming up for 11 minutes, let's take some time to fiddle around with the uh, controls of the ship and do some science. So, like, let's see what the pressure data is like. This is worth 12 science. Very good. So let's save that. Uh, a crew report is doing no good, right? Yeah, we already know about space. Um, and I put a 
thermometer on here somewhere, right? Did I put it on the lower stage, maybe? Did I did I forget it? I thought I had a thermometer. I'm gonna be feel a bit silly if I forgot the thermometer, which it looks like I did. Uh, double look a little more. Oh, no, there it is. It's just hiding. Uh, log the temperature. Okay, so that's that's some more science. Um, and we could just leave it there and then plan to recover the ship uh, and get the science back. But um, I think we've determined that this thing blows up in the atmosphere like every time. I don't remember if the barometer does. So what I'd like to do instead is transfer crew. Transfer Neobald in. Uh, to here. Oh, sorry. Stop. Uh, transfer him here then. So apparently, can you do this transferring normally? Like, what if what if the crew cabin were full? How would I swap two people? Can you just not do that? It's good that we brought only two, I guess. So head up now um, here, transfer crew. Um, Bob, transfer into the command module. And... Now, what I'm going to do, Bob, is ask you to be very, very careful, because you're going out into space and you're going to let go. Uh, I think he's going to let go anyway. Maybe he can do the stuff he needs to while still hanging on. Yeah, it looks like maybe he can. Well, first, we've done an EVA report here before, right? Oh, it's worth eight science. Okay. Cool. Maybe we never have. Who knows? What does it say? Review report? Yeah, you recorded observations. All right. Well, sure. That's cool. Uh, and what we can do is say take the data out of the barometer and put it in your pocket. And now, as a result, um, normally, the barometer would become unusable. If, a, if we had sent, say, Neobald up here, we would not be able to use the barometer again. But he's a scientist and he knows how to make experiments become reusable, so he's doing that for us. We can, in fact, log the pressure data again, but we don't actually care um, because we've already got a measurement from here and we can only hold one of them. I plan to use this again, like on the moon or something, so we don't need to save another copy of the experiment we already have. And uh, likewise, we can take the data out of the thermometer, and it's still ready to go. Cool, so we don't have to let go after all. I was a little bit uh, nervous that I was going to mess it up by forgetting how the SAS controls work, or RCS controls work. But it looks like uh, we don't have to do that. He just has to go out and like, I guess just sort of reach way over with one hand while keeping his other hand firmly on the ladder. How he can reach this far is a mystery to me, but apparently he can. Uh, cool. So, by the way, we can turn on the lights, can't we? Shouldn't you be the lights? Lights? Just, they just don't turn on when you're in space, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're in EVA? I don't know. Let's get back on. Turn on the lights. Yeah. Now they do. The crew cabin lights up. We... Those don't look blue at all. Did I mess something up? I don't know. Whatever. I'm sure white will, will be fine as well. Uh, so let's do a retransfer to get a, an actual pilot back at... Uh, so now we've got stored data. Three, right? That's the idea. Amazing. Um, crew report. Yeah, we, are, we already have that. Fine. So whatever. Uh, okay, so transfer crew Bob into here, and then transfer Neobald to here, and we're ready to start flying this thing again. Uh, and our our Minmus insertion burn shouldn't be any trouble at all. It's not. Is it? It's not. It's a transfer burn. Insertion would be to get into orbit once we're there. I think I'm using the terms correctly. What we're doing here is a, a transfer burn to get us out of this orbit and into one that's over there. Um, yeah, so we only have to burn 920 meters per second. Uh, whereas to get to the moon, it's like 860. Not a big deal at all. Maybe 830, I don't know. Comparatively, a much smaller amount of fuel to adjust from going to Minmus instead of the moon. So let's get oriented... Well, actually, let's, let's just warp to our next maneuver, huh? And then we'll orient prograde and we'll burn. Stop. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, node is two minutes. I didn't want. I don't know if time warp would have stopped me like a full minute before our thing, so I, I, I stopped it early to, to make sure. 
Uh, how are we doing for electric charge? We still have a ton. We haven't done very much because, oh, SAS doesn't cost electricity when it's the pilot doing it. Except that it still costs them to use the reaction wheel, of course, but making decisions is free. I don't know. Maybe that's why we were running out of charge so quickly on um, the unmanned thing we were doing SAS with. All right, so we have our burn planned out, and we're almost at the... Uh, what is the word that I'm thinking of? At the node to, to do the burn? Yeah, now seems good. Let's go. How are we for fuel? We still have quite a bit. Um, but this is a, a two minute burn, which which is quite a lot. Um, so there's there's some danger that this will be enough that we won't be able to, to get into a proper orbit of Minmus, but even if we can't get into orbit, we'll get some valuable science from it, and we'll learn and put maybe some more fuel on the lander stage next time, or in the booster stage, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure out how to use some Rocco Max. That's another thing. I'd like to put science into the Rocco Max parts. Like the the we have some good Rocco Max parts that are like strong engines, but we haven't been using them because they the adapter that we have to build on them is gigantic, and it seems like a waste of mass to me. Um, we could research a more uh, slim adapter, and then I wouldn't feel so bad about using, like, a large stage, for large rocket for the booster stage, and, like, medium for orbital, or medium for, I guess this is the orbital, and then small for, like, the lander stage, I guess you would call it. Anyway, it would be nice to have better Rockomax adapters and so, so that we can... Uh, choose a more reasonable size for our rockets based on what we want them to do. I can't... B it's so hard to believe that this orbit is going to extend all the way out to here with just the last few meters per second of our burn. But, yeah, look at it. As, as it gets wider and wider... Or n narrower and... N longer and longer. Yeah, there we go. Right, so let's, let's burn a little more gently here. Make sure we actually get the encounter we wanted. No? Hmm. Our target position... We don't have a proper encounter. Why not? We're on the right orbital plane. Our position... Separation 2.8 kilometers... M million kilometers. 2.8 million meters. 2,800 kilometers. Uh, do I need to burn... I guess I need to burn a little bit more prograde, huh? There we go. Just didn't go quite far enough. Okay. Uh, and it's just gonna... We're just gonna whiz right by it. Um, yeah. I'm not totally convinced we have enough fuel to land and take back off again. And I don't want to risk messing that up. Uh, so we'll probably just not do any adjustments while we're there, or maybe, I don't know, maybe slow down a bit once we're out there to try to stay in orbit longer if it turns out... Like, how long are we going to be in orbit? Uh, our Minmus encounter is in four days and four hours. Our Minmus escape is in five days and one hour. So we'll be, we'll be in Minmus' sphere of influence for, like, almost a day. That should be plenty of time to get out, do some science, and come back, huh? Okay. So let's go ahead, then, and uh, time warp out to, say, here. Cannot auto-warp so far, really. I've never seen that before. But I can warp to here. Not here. Because this is based on, like, our, our encounter, I guess? Interesting. Um, well, let's just warp at times a thousand. Because I want to try doing some science while we're, like, out here and see... Or at least try looking around to see if this counts as, like, being in a different kind of place than where we are in orbit. Like, this is high in space. This is in orbit. Actually, we should already count as high in space, right? Like, we're... We're not in a proper orbit anymore, I don't think. What is our location? Situation orbiting. Ah, so here it'll actually tell us 
Our sphere of influence is Kerbin, and we're orbiting. We're very, very high orbiting, but we're still orbiting. Okay, so we won't get any new science from doing anything cool out here. All right. I, I feel like there's more stuff it's trying to tell me under this. Okay, I can just scroll. Oh, look! Burn time... Oh, so our max acceleration is 10.4 meters per second per second. That's good to know. Um, I wish I knew how much fuel it costs us to gain 10 meters per second, but okay. Um, yeah, and so I, I kind of have some idea of what ComNet is about now. There's like... Um, or is... Ah, shoot. Yeah, ComNet is actually the communication satellite, so we know about that. That's fine. Um, there's another thing called CurbNet, which is different. And uh, which is for, like, scanning... Uh, bodies to see, like, what biomes are on them. Because, like, doing science just on the moon, just like in Kerbin, Kerbin has, like, mountains, it has oceans, and, like, you can do different science in different parts. The moon has biomes, too. There's midlands, craters, I don't know, probably mountains. Uh, and there's a thing called CurbNet, which, like, you can build scanners that help you know what parts are where, I guess. I don't know the details. But anyway, man, can you believe we're going at 100x time here and still, like, not moving at all? Let's do a thousand. Yeah, our moon periapsis is one point... Minmus periapsis 1.5 million meters. Goodness gracious. We just move very, very slowly out here. Um, what's our periapsis on the way back? 179 kilometers. Okay. So, our heat shields are going to get a workout on the way back in, I suspect. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be moving very quickly uh, on the re-entry. I should have checked how, how fast we were going as we flew by here, but actually it wasn't really much faster than when you go by the moon. Probably like 3.2 uh, kilometers per second or something. Uh, we've overcome bigger obstacles than that before. So, I want to know what our orbital velocity is with respect to Minmus as we fly by here. Because that'll tell me how many meters per second we would need if we wanted to land. Um, how much delta V, as the cool kids say. All right, let's just, um, let's just warp to here now. We're close enough that it'll auto-warp us. And look at that, it turned it all the way up to like 11 there, man. All right, here comes our encounter. Jeez, just okay. Warp, warp to here. <laughs> All right. Stop. So we are now going 317 meters per second with respect to Minmus, and this looks like an extremely short encounter. But actually, it's like two whole hours before we escape. So what if I wanted to add a maneuver here and burn retrograde? How much would we need to get into a proper circular orbit? 300 meters per second. That's kind of a lot. A 28 second burn? We have enough to do that twice. Right? I think. I say twice, of course, because we'll need to get back... Uh, back to Kerbin, uh, and we'll have to regain all that velocity to send us in roughly the right direction. But it would be really great to be able to get some orbital science, wouldn't it? That's what I think. Uh, I guess we'll leave that decision uh, for the moment, and get... Do our, do our little science dance here, where we send... Uh, transfer crew, Neil Bald into the crew cabin, transfer crew, Bob into the command pod. Why can't I rotate, like, okay. There's, I was just having trouble ro getting a particular perspective I wanted to get on the ship. All right, let's get closer up. Um, and Bob, will you please go on EVA for me? What do you think about what's out here? What's your EVA report? We're in space high over Minmus, and that's worth 20 science. Ah, I see. And so so I, I learned what the deal is with these bars here. Um, the, uh, the idea is this bar represents all the science you could ever get from doing an unlimited number of experiments like this one. Uh, and normally you get 70% of what is remaining. Uh, Except I think for EVA reports you get you get a hundred always. Um, 
crew report? Uh, actually, get back in the ship. I want to do your crew report as well. Uh, crew report. And get some more science. Normally, for crew reports and AVA reports, you always get 100%. But, like, for... Oh, I should have brought some mystery goo since we were going to Minmus. Oh, well. Uh, on the barometer... Yeah, for recovery, we get 100% of it. Normally, when you don't have a scientist, you only get 70%. Um, so this way, we only have to... This is going to be like the last time we ever need to do a pressure scan around Minmus because we have a scientist around who understands what all this gobbledygook means. Log the temperature on this. Yep, okay. 20 science for how cold it is in space <laughs> around Minmus. All right, uh, let's see... Now get back out on EVA so we can we can recapture this stuff. Um, take the data out of here. This way, if it explodes on re-entry, we still get all the science. And take the science out of here. And I wish, as I said, that I had brought mystery goo, but I did not think about the fact that we'd be going to Minmus. I'm sure this won't be our last trip to Minmus. We can uh, bring mystery goo next time. Um, and again, there's really no reason to fly around. It does sound like fun, but I really don't want to lose my scientist uh, just because I forgot how to use RCS. So I think what we can do is say, all right, we have 28 seconds of fuel to burn to get into an orbit. Uh, it looks like we probably won't have... Hello? Can I... We probably won't have enough to... I'm trying to adjust... Oh, I don't have a pilot, so I can't adjust this in maneuver node. Okay. Because uh, we have this idiot scientist at the wheel. Um, transfer crew to here. Or... To here. Yes. Okay, then transfer crew needle balled into the command module. Now I can do that. So basically, it would be nice to get scientific data from orbit around the moon. Uh, at the, uh, around Minmus. I don't think that we have enough fuel to land and then take off, but maybe we do. If it turns out that 28 seconds is a small portion of our fuel, then, like, whatever. But if it turns out that it's a big chunk of our fuel, we can cancel the burn uh, early if we need to, or we can... whatever. Um, our orbital velocity right now is 318 meters per second. Wow, really? Our orbital velocity is 318 meters per second, and in order to come down into orbit, we have to burn 300 meters per second retrograde. Basically cutting us down to, like, almost zero uh, orbital speed. That doesn't seem right. There must be something I don't understand about this. Well, let's warp to the maneuver. I would like to get into orbit, or at least try. Let's get prograde. No, let's get retrograde. Very good. And how are we doing, by the way, for electricity? Still got a ton. Okay. Uh, so let's keep an eye on our fuel and throttle up. And just make sure that 28 seconds is not too big a portion of our of our fuel here. Oh, actually, we can we can look here, right? One alligator. Okay, so we're burning up about two fuel per second out of 120. So that's like burning up. We're going to have just enough fuel to get into orbit and then back towards Kerbin, I think. Not much to spare, but we will have some. Stop. Okay, we are in a fine orbit, and our orbital speed is 31 meters per second. If we wanted to get in closer, we could. Um, but I think I'll settle for this and make sure that we have enough to go back home. Uh, right... I think that's a good plan. So we'll do this crew transfer one more time. Oh, let's do a crew report. Cancel. Right, we've already done one from... Wait, what? What is our our space situation? Wait, where's the one that says our situation? Here. We're in... We're orbiting around Minmus, so shouldn't we get a different crew report or something? I'm a little confused. Um, okay, well, we'll do the, the this... What does the barometer have to say? Where the heck even is the barometer? It's sort of hard to see. Here it is. Log the pressure data. Yes, zero. We're in a vacuum. 
in space high over Minmus. So keep that experiment, sure. Um, where's the thermometer? Here. Log the temperature. Yep, more science. Very good. <clears throat> uh, transfer crew. Neil Bald into here. Transfer crew. Bob into here. This is sort of a silly process. Crew report. In space high over Minmus. Cool. Look, uh, a favorite childhood dessert. You are tempted to taste the surface. What does it look like? Oh, zooming out isn't going to show. we got to look on the map view. Uh, where is Minmus? That's, that's Minmus, all right. So we're not going to get very close. I can't even... That's it there? Behind the ship? Or is that Kerbin? I think that's Minmus. Oh yeah, Kerbin must be way out there, and that's the moon. Yeah, I can't really tell what Minmus looks like. I remember from seeing it many years ago, but maybe it's changed. I don't know. Uh, okay, cool. Well, here we are. Um, and we just want to do one last thing. Could you go into EVA, Bob? Um, give me an EVA report from In Space Over Minmus. Very good. Uh, and now just scrape all the science out of these guys. Take data. Take data. Um... These are all while in space high over Minmus? Huh. Shouldn't this be orbiting around Minmus? I don't quite understand that. It should be a different situation, I thought. Maybe we have to be lower to make that happen? Hmm. I'm tempted to just try to spend a little more fuel to get us into a low orbit on the other side. But I really don't like the idea of using up the last of our fuel on like some silly scientific endeavor when we might need it to get back um, back home. And I think I would like to have a little bit of fuel left uh, for a orbital adjustments like to, to make the re-entry not quite so steep. So I think I'll just be happy with what we have here. It's a lot of science. Um, not sure exactly how much, but a lot. Uh, and how? which direction? <clears throat> We're going this way. Which side should I be burning on to get back out? Oh, we're... Oh, no. Hang on. X. No, oh, he's, he's not a scientist. Okay. He's not, he's, he's not a pilot. So let's transfer the crew, Bob, back into here. Transfer Neil Bald back into here. And uh, let's see what we can do here. So let's delete the existing maneuver, since we already used it to get in. And um, we're going this way. I think a prograde burn here is the thing to do. It'll extend our orbit that way. And get us out of... yeah. I think it would be better if we were orbiting the other direction. <clears throat> Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I think... <sighs> Burning prograde here will get us out of orbit and send our... Uh, send us that way. Burning, if we were bur going the other, if, if we could burn prograde here, it would make, what are we doing to our orbit relative to Kerbin when we burn on either side of Minmus here? Because I think that's what I need to be thinking about, is my orbit relative to Kerbin. To bring my Kerbin orbit down, my periapsis down, we're sort of already at what we can consider our Kerbin apoapsis. So to bring our orbit down, don't we in principle want to 
burn retrograde with respect to our Kerbin orbit? Yes, we do. And which way is retrograde with respect to our Kerbin orbit? It's the opposite of the direction that the moon is going. Um, and the direction that the, not the moon, Minmus. The direction that Minmus is going is this... Oh, I always forget. Which of these is forward? The... Well, let's just do a little bit of time warp and see which direction we're going so that I can understand which direction these things are. Is this... Okay, so we're going this way. Stop. Stop time warping. Um, we're going this way, which means that this darker gray is forward. And Minmus, therefore, is going this way. So to burn retrograde with respect to our Kerbin orbit, we should burn this way. But it needs to be prograde with respect to Minmus, or we'll crash into the, the surface. So how do we solve that? Uh, and is that right? Do we want to burn retrograde with respect to Kerbin? I think so. We need to bring our periapsis down. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to burn in this direction, like so, while that is prograde for us, which is here, actually. That's the most efficient way to re-enter. It seems crazy, because it's sending our Minmus orbit this way. And when we did that last time around the moon, I got panicked and like, we're going the wrong way, and I, I gave up and, and turned around. <clears throat> but I think I want to try it again. I think it's the right idea. So, all right, this is nine, nine days. All right, let's just do it now then, huh? Um, we will burn prograde. Wow, these are this is a long orbit. I guess we're only going 31 meters per second. Uh, and so doing that, we'll send our orbit out this way with respect to Minmus. But with respect to Kerbin, it's bringing our orbit to where we want it. And, and really, Minmus is ex exerting very little influence on us right now, and so we don't care what our orbit does with respect to Minmus, is my, uh, my summary of the situation, which about which I hope that I am right. Um, so in fact, we don't want to burn quite prograde, do we? We want to burn, like, prograde is this way. We'd like to go this way if we can, if I can figure out which direction that is. Which direction is it? Uh, well, with, it's a bit to the right of prograde. But neither anti-normal nor normal. Right? So it's a bit radially to the right of prograde. Which way is normal? Let's let's flip around a bit here. This is this is normal. So we don't want to go that direction, but we can we can consider this as up. So if I roll so that that's up, things will start to make a little bit more sense, I think. Um, now, I could just use the encounter, I think. Uh, I could use a maneuver node to get myself pointed in the right direction, but I think that this is the kind of thing that I would like to know how to do better. So I want to try doing it without the maneuver node, and then, and then set up a maneuver and see if it's pointing in roughly the direction I thought we were supposed to go. So right now we're pointed prograde, and we're right between normal and anti-normal. Which is perfect. I want to leave it like that. But I want to burn to the right, or angle a bit to the right of this by, let's say, 45 degrees? So we are at... Oh, I can't read these little markers. Okay, this is zero, and we want to get to about here, I think. So let's turn off the SAS and point this way. Yes, this is radial. 
And if I, if I, this this might help me get a better grasp on which way is radial and which way is anti-radial as well. So we're burning. This looks like anti-radial. Does that make sense? I think so. Because we're um. Our our radius is this way. No, I have no idea which whether this is radial or anti-radial. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. So now let's um, set up a maneuver to do what I thought we were doing, which is to say, burning prograde a bit, and that's sending us in the wrong direction. But um, only with respect to Minmus. And it's bringing our Kerbin Apoapsis down. So we'll just burn like this. Yeah, so that's giving us a pretty weird looking orbit, right? Uh, what? What is this? Is this our Kerbin escape? I don't want to escape Kerbin. So we're actually burning... Yeah, so I, I, I think we have to fix this. We actually do have to burn in the anti-radial direction a bit to lower. Yeah, look at that! Okay. So let's not burn quite as much prograde. The radial adjustment. Nice. So it's doing what I thought it was going to do. Uh, oh, can we... Can we, uh... Can we just do a quick fly by the moon on the way back? Yeah. Uh, that'll give us a bit of leverage to adjust our our a lot of leverage to swing around the moon to to get a, a better. Hmm. Actually, maybe what I should do is when we get to here, we could burn again. But this is nine days away. Wow. Um, on this orbit. Jeez, everything around Minmus is so slow. Yeah, we definitely did not have enough to land here. It wouldn't cost us very much to land, because we're moving very slowly, but um, we aren't going to have much to spare, <laughs> honestly. Um, so, now what if... That's one burn I could do, but I'm starting to have a little bit of fuel anxiety. And so I want to see what happens if we delete this encounter node and instead burn here, or here rather, that is just prograde. How much cheaper is it? Uh, the moon escape? I don't care about the moon. It's costing us a lot here, because so we're not really at our Kerbin periapsis right now, and just burning prograde here forever is not the idea. I think we kind of want to burn prograde enough. Okay, here's how we're going to get better fuel efficiency. We could do a burn here that gets us back to Kerbin, but it's pretty expensive because we're not really at our apoapsis. Um, man, I'm not actually sure. If we burn prograde here until we escape Kerbin. Then we can burn at our Kerbin and uh, escape the moon. That's very cheap. It costs us like no fuel at all to get out of Kerbin orbit, or out of Minmus orbit. But that sends us to Kerbin Apoapsis 44 days away, which seems a bit excessive. So we can burn a bit prograde, burn more prograde. And as we do that, what's happening to our Kerbal orbit? It's getting a little weird. 37 days. There's got to be a better way to do this. Yeah, and that's our Kerbin escape. So don't do not do that. What if I... What if I decide that I'm wrong about this whole thing, and I would rather try burning prograde here? What's that going to do? We're just, like, on a trajectory out of Kerbin forever. And no... Yeah, 
any amount that we burn there sends us in the wrong direction. So to get home, uh, we definitely want to... Uh, God, get out of here. There's a million, a million things in the way. Go away. Okay. And all this stuff is like right clicked on for some reason. I don't understand it. Okay. Unright click yourself. Very good. So, I guess what this means is that the most, the most efficient time is indeed what we thought here. Add maneuver, burn, prograde, and that's going to send us pretty far. Yes, yeah, 20 days away. Oh! I was thinking for some reason we were slings we were going in this direction around this orbit. And that we were going to be f 30, 40 days till we got to Apoapsis and we could adjust. But we're not. We're going to be heading this way. So we just want to burn prograde more. To get our carbon Apoapsis basically into the atmosphere is the idea. Do we have enough fuel to do this? 58 seconds of burn to get into the atmosphere. Yikes. Well, actually, that's not the atmosphere so much as the lithosphere, i.e. the rocks. Um, so if we burn this much, we will graze the atmosphere this is enough to get us home eventually, but it might be several laps around the orbit. But I'm not sure what else I can do. Right? We're we're at this point at our lowest carbon apoapsis, and we're burning retrograde with respect to carbon. I think that's the best I can do, really. The um, the other choice would be to try to bounce off the moon on the way in. Is there some way I could do that? How much of an adjustment would it take to intersect with the moon? Set as target. Well, it would be four million meters away. Um, what if, so I want to save fuel, which means burn less prograde on the way in. Okay, there we have an encounter with the moon. If I... oh, wrong direction. If I do something like this, is it a useful encounter? We're sort of... Double click, show me. Tab? Not the sun, oh my gosh. I just want to zoom into the moon and see what's going on at our encounter. There we go. So we will be... coming in sort of... Here's our encounter and the moon will be here. It would be whipping us around in the wrong direction like this. But if we could encounter it on the backswing instead, how would I do that? Um, burn hopefully less. It that's still not right. What if I were to burn more? We miss the moon completely. Yeah, it looks like our trajectory is not going to get us to the moon in any useful way right now. Yeah, this. If we do this, the moon is going to pull us away from Kerbin, which is not what we want. Oh boy, I'm starting to worry these guys are stuck in space forever because I decided to get into a Minmus orbit instead of just slingshotting around. Uh, how much fuel 
do we have left? Not that much. Get out of here, Moon. Um, where is the moon now? Let me just unset it as my target. Yeah. And we don't really need the nav ball at the moment either. Um, okay. Minma Slander here. Our carbon periaps is seven million meters. And we have to, to bring it down. We can basically burn more is what we have to do. 1.3 million meters still. Let's just keep that focused. So this This is what we have to do to get into the atmosphere. Burn for a minute. We might have enough fuel for that. The other thing we can do is burn enough to get out of moon or Minmus orbit. And then when we're actually at our apoapsis, which is quite a ways out, um, our speed relative to carbon will be basically zero. And so even the slightest adjustment to it will bring us roaring down into the atmosphere. Um, I really don't think we have 675 meters per second of fuel. Uh, I just don't think we do. Um, which means that maybe the slower approach of like... Uh, getting into sort of part of an orbit and then uh, slingshot past Kerbin without even touching the atmosphere, get out to an apoapsis here, and burn retrograde to bring our, um, our periapsis into the atmosphere again might be our best bet. I'm not really sure what went wrong with this whole mission. Everything seemed great, and I thought I had plenty of fuel to get onto Minmus. I don't I didn't expect it to cost this much delta V to get back to uh Kerbin, I guess. But I suppose it cost about as much to get back as it did to leave, right? That makes sense. Uh all right, well, bleh. So let's just warp to our next maneuver and try to keep an eye on what is happening to our orbit, to our fuel as we burn, and decide whether we can afford to try to hit the atmosphere on the first go, or if we have to slingshot around uh, to Apoapsis uh, to save fuel. Wait, what? Here? I want to be here. I want to be at at my periaps, uh, don't I? Or my apoaps? I want to be at. I want to be pointing towards Kerbin. Um. I want to burn this direction, and the best time to do that is when our speed is maximized, which is like here. Not sure why it stopped me so early. Something to do with rotating around the, the, the uh, around Minmus, changing. I don't know. So what if I add a maneuver here to burn prograde? Does that like is that better? Oh, now we are at our okay. So we're now actually at our apoapsis with, or with respect to Kerbin, and it's not. For some reason, burning where I said to was sending us further out into space. I I don't know. The maneuver must have been planned wrong, like, due to our orbit around Kerbin slash Minmus being weird. Now I think we have enough fuel to get home. This is a more reasonable amount of fuel. Something about the way that the maneuver was planned was not right, and I don't, I don't know why. I don't know exactly what I did wrong. Uh, but now, to get back to Kerbin... Uh, 
Yeah, we're now really at our apoapsis. And so we're bringing down periapsis as efficiently as possible. I'm glad that slingshotting around wasn't the answer because I didn't understand why it was a good idea. I was like, huh, this burn is bringing us out further into space, even though I don't think it should have. Um, all right, I can keep this in view. Now everything is doing what I expected it to, and it makes sense how much fuel, or how much, um, what's happening to our orbit as I burn here. So that should be fine, right? 61 kilometers. We might end up doing another lap, but that's fine. Uh, it'll be good for us to get some arrow breaking in. <laughs> um, and now, with regard to Kerbin, we're... Interesting. So it shows... That makes sense, I guess. When we burn... If we wait till here to burn, we won't actually be here. We'll be here. Because of... Uh, because Minmus is moving with respect to Kerbin while we move with respect to Minmus. We're just orbiting around Minmus much more slowly than we were around the moon, and therefore this translational effect has a bigger if impact than it did last time, uh, which is why I didn't really expect it. So let's get to here. Uh, and honestly, waiting another couple minutes is not doing much for us. We don't care where we are with respect to Minmus. We just got to our carbon apoapsis. Might as well burn as early as possible rather than wait another six minutes to save, you know, two grams of fuel or something. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get prograde. <laughs> don't just burn in some random direction. And burn in three, two, one. Fuel is holding steady. We've got more than enough. Uh, slow down so I can burn gently to bring us just grazing the atmosphere. Alright, that's actually a little lower than I meant. Um, we've got fuel. Let's, let's point retrograde and make this a bit wider. <laughs> I keep hitting the wrong button to stop thrusting and so it doesn't really work. Um, let's get prograde again, and just the tiniest little nudge in this direction, please. My finger on X to stop thrusting, not some other button. Alright, 57. That seems reasonable. I don't know if this will bring us in on the first pass or not. Um, I think what I'll do is, when we get close to Kerbin, I'll use up the last of our fuel burning retrograde. Uh, to slow us down and then get rid of the thing. And we will re-enter on the first try, but it won't be as steep as it could be. It's going longer than I planned, of course. It always does. Um, so can I... I can't auto-warp so far. Oh, well, whatever. Why did my time warp slow down? I don't know. We briefly brushed by Minmus or something? Or because we transferred from Minmus it slowed things down for us? Yeah, wow, what a what what a long return trip this is. Okay, can we warp to here yet? Yes. Oh my goodness. So our orbital speed is pretty high, but not outside of the realm of reason. Um, let's warp a bit closer. And see what our orbital speed looks like, and then I can decide whether I want to... Uh, when, when we should use up all of our remaining fuel. I think this is... Fine-ish? 480 kilometers up going 2,500 meters per second. Well, I'd like, ideally, to burn it all up right before we get into the atmosphere so that I can still jettison the rockets um, and have the maximum impact uh, as possible on our re-entry. Or the minimum impact? If I burn it up here, the sooner I burn it up, the further into the atmosphere it's going to plunge us, right? Um... 
And the question is, can we survive re-entering all in one go at this speed? I think we've done this before. I think we'd be okay. So what I'm going to do is just orient retrograde and burn gently, see what happens to our periapsis. Of course it's going down. Not that much. We could burn up all of our fuel to bring it in more steeply. But, uh... I just want to get us into, like the low 50s to high 40s, at which point I think we should experience enough atmospheric drag. I just don't want to slingshot us all the way back, you know, four days away when we could re-enter all in one go if we wanted, you know? And I, I think we have enough heat shield for that. So I'm just burning very gently here to make sure I can adjust when our I don't want to make any drastic adjustments because we might not have enough fuel to undo them. Alright, throttle up a bit. This is a little bit silly. Oh, what just happened to our orbit? Oh, our orbit... Oh, we had a little m Minmus encounter. Moon encounter? Moon encounter, I guess. Alright, this is probably... This is probably good. I think getting this low in the atmosphere is going to slow us down quite a lot. Um, so it won't bring us out even a day in the worst case. Um, and I don't, I don't think we will hit the worst case, really. I think we're going to slow down a fair bit. So let's time warp. And I'll keep the thrusters attached for now. Um, if it looks like we're going to re-enter in one pass, then I'll orient prograde to jettison them behind us after using up all the fuel, I guess. Yeah, three kilometers per second is pretty fast. We came in this fast once, and it was a little bit tricky. In fact, our orbit is now very close to a moon return orbit. So that that's telling me that's how far... We've done this before. Uh, so I think, actually, let's just burn retrograde, use up all the fuel um, to slow down our re-entry, and we'll do it in one pass. We've, we've done this before, and it was fine. And I just want to get rid of all the fuel and make it as gentle as I can. It still won't be gentle. Yeah, here comes the atmosphere. Uh... Actually, I guess we're not jettisoning... Yeah, we're jettisoning retrograde eventually. Okay, stop. Burn... Turn prograde. Uh, and get rid of these losers. And then retrograde again to keep everything on the ship safe. So, is that going to re-enter, or is it bouncing off? Not clear yet. Oh, it just exploded. Or maybe that was our thermometers exploding? What is this? That's our crew hatch. Shouldn't our heat shield be here? It is here. Oh, it's just the reaction wheel is in the way. I put the reaction thing on the other side of the heat shield, thinking it would be nice to have even for the re-entry phase. But, haha, ha, ha, like, it's in the wrong... It's, it's in front of the heat shield. <laughs> it's not going to survive this. Um, on the plus side, we're not using up a blader yet. <laughs> I would be amazed if that thing uh, survived. But who knows? We'll see. Yeah, we're we're now bringing our apoapsis down uh, as we go through the atmosphere. And I think it'll probably come all the way down to inside the atmosphere. But I'm not sure. Maybe we'll... We are at the moment heading back up. We've passed periapsis. And it sounds like it's quieting down, actually. So maybe we are going to do this in two passes. I don't know. We're not going up that quickly. Uh, 
I don't really want a physics warp. I kind of want to end the episode because it's gotten quite long. We just passed the hour mark. But, uh, ooh, look at that. There's the sun. But of course, this is a bad time. Like, this mission really deserves a, a thrilling conclusion. Um, and right now is a bit, a bit stressful. It's, we don't want a cliffhanger like that. Yeah, so I think we're actually going to uh, need another go-round to, to re-enter, which is fine. It means we'll come in much more gently than uh, we won't be screaming in the whole time. That's, you know, that's what aerobraking is all about. Oh, look at that mountain. It sticks out noticeably. And we're back out of the atmosphere. Uh, I wish I could jettison this stabilizer um, to get the heat shield uh, in place, but I think the worst that'll happen is, like, the stabilizer explodes. I'm like, oh well. Okay, so let's just, um... Are we out of the atmosphere yet? Not quite, but we will be soon. Let's just warp to here. Yeah, it won't warp very quickly at all while we're in the atmosphere. Of course. But we're climbing out of the atmosphere very quickly. And then it should uh, speed us back up. Good good work piloting so far, ne Nilbald, so far. Uh oh, slash. Yeah, so it was doing it was trying to physics warp us. Alright, so let's just warp here. An actual proper time warp. That was a pretty cool maneuver, huh? The arrow breaking? Rather than just slamming straight into orbit. If we had come straight in, oh my gosh. Like if we had lowered our, our apoapsis to be within the atmosphere, I don't think we had enough heat shield to come in safely. Um I'm I'm glad we're taking it the slow way. Yeah, let's just uh let's just warp to here and it'll stop once we're in the atmosphere, so Time warp stopped. Okay. So here we are. Make sure you're oriented retrograde still. Got plenty of electric charge, so we don't need to worry about that running out. And let's just physics warp a bit until we're lower. And I believe this should be the real re-entry. And I think we'll lose the, the reaction wheel as well. But who knows? Planet looks pretty cool. Get a crew report? We've already done this, right? cancel. Yeah, so the uh, the reaction wheel has cooled down a bit from the last time we flew by here, but our orbital speed is down to 2,500 kilometers instead of 3,000. Um, so this this time around, I believe our apoapsis will enter the atmosphere and we will we will not bounce off again. Yeah, it's coming down pretty fast and we're not even at periapsis yet. Let's get back to the point of view of the ship then, so we can watch the fireworks. Hopefully there won't be any fireworks, but... Um, yeah, I'm actually amazed the reaction wheel is holding steady at this, uh, at this velocity. And we're slowing down, so I guess it's just not going to heat up enough to burn? Maybe? I don't know. Well, let's slow down the time warp. I don't want, like... Uh, sketchy physics acceleration to be what what blows us up. It, it makes in order to to speed things up uh, while you're it, it makes approximations, uh, and I don't really want a slightly faulty approximation to be the cause of any disasters. Is, is all I'm saying. So also, why does it say there's a crew hatch here? How do you send the crew like out? through the heat shield and the stabilizer. It doesn't make any sense to me. There's a crew hatch here. That makes sense. Oh, I see. No, I don't see it all. Maybe there's one in the bottom of this crew cabin that I just never knew about? How? Yeah, how do they get in? Must be through the bottom, right? Since there's no other dang doors? And just to confirm, yeah, our apoapsis is well within the atmosphere. Where is... Kerbal Space Center, anyway. We're coming in roughly equatorial, so we should be able to find it on a map. Here? I think it's here. Yeah. Um, so we're coming in on, like, roughly the other side of the planet. The, um, 
smallest amount of science recovery work we could really get. Or not science recovery. We got that 100% of that because we have a scientist on board, but um, parts recovery, which is fine. The amount we're recovering from this vessel is, is insignificant. Trivially small. It sure is like a little bit... When you, when you consider... <coughs> compare like this re-entry to what we were doing before we started visiting other celestial bodies. Uh, when we were just sort of going up into space and maybe orbit, and then coming back down, and re-entry just didn't last that long. But here, we just have a ton more speed to burn off, and we're burning it all laterally. And so you're, you're re-entering more gradually, because it's more lateral, but for a much longer time, because it's faster. So it just, I don't know. It feels a lot more nerve-wracking, not because it's more dangerous, it seems like it's actually safer than coming straight down, but, but because the suspense is more prolonged. We have to wait forever to make sure that we came in okay. At this point, I'm pretty sure, like, things are actually easing up rather than getting worse. So I'm pretty sure we'll be coming in just fine. We've got plenty of altitude to burn. Um, and, and our speed is, is not high enough to be a concern anymore. In fact, it looks like we've stopped having heat issues at all on the reaction wheel, so that's remarkable. I guess about one kilometer per second is when everything is just perfectly fine. We got little little licks of flame, but, but nothing to be concerned about. It's only a little bit on fire. Which really, rockets are sort of designed to be set on fire, right? So, why, why worry? Oh, we never even deployed the lander legs. How sad. Uh, brakes. I think those are basically just for planes. Um, we don't really have any. So, safe to deploy, sure. So it won't actually deploy itself until we're at three quarters atmosphere, I think. One quarter atmosphere? Um, which, is, which is still pretty high up. Plenty of time to catch us. I say, reassuring myself. Yeah, our speed is... It's slowing us down a little bit, and when it gets to one kilometer, uh, we'll be going plenty slow for it to catch us. I'm fairly sure. <laughs> let's let's just let's just do a quick save here. I don't normally do this, but I I want to make I want to try to break my early parachute habit. Uh, but I don't trust myself, so I made sure that it would be safe. I can stay hands off hands off the keyboard. And uh, ho oh, ho ho ho. Holy cow, that's close. One kilometer is dicey. I would rather be at like one and a half kilometers. That slowed us down like right before we got to the water. All right, you can let her go, Valentina. Actually, would you go on EVA here? Are we done? And Yeah, now it tipped over, of course, since so she's not piloting it. Oh, yeah, take a surface sample. Oh, yeah, save that. Great. Uh, and do an EVA report as well? Alright, that's not worth anything. Uh, well, get back in there. Alright, to Minmus and back, we didn't manage to land, but we did do a cool flyby and got a ton of science because we brought a proper scientist with us. Better than if we had had the Science Junior instead, I think. I think. I don't know. Anyway, let's recover this vessel and finally end this gargantuan episode I know, you guys probably don't mind. You, you know, hey, longer videos, great. But uh, this, you know, if it were like an eight hour video, you would probably be like, come on. And so there's got to be some point in the middle there where it's like a little bit unreasonable. Uh, okay, so 142 science. I, f I wonder if actually the science junior might have been worth more because we got like 75 from doing that in orbit around the moon, didn't we? Or landed on the moon? I don't remember. But uh, yeah, we picked up a bunch of great stuff. Um, recovered all the crew, recovered the parts we could reasonably have recovered. Didn't even use the heat shield, which f makes me feel kind of silly. Oh, we used three ablator out of 200. Okay, not sure how that happened. Cool. Uh, and Neilbald is level two now, so he can do some new exciting thing we don't know about, and Bob can do something too. Let's go check what that is before we end the episode. He can do radial and normal attitude hold. Cool. 
Uh, so if he levels up again, maybe we get encounter hold or something. I don't know. And how about you, Bob? What do you have for us? Oh, more than 100% science, I guess, is what we get back. Reset experiments and run experiments from EVA we already had. Okay, well, congratulations, boys. Welcome back. Um, and look at that courage. It's way up there. Neil Bald is a, an animal. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.